Hello, and welcome to the seventh in my series, where I'm restoring my family's old Detonium Ebner 99V back to some of its original glory. In my last video, I was investigating a strange wobble that I found in the outputs of one of my amplifier channels. So you can see, here I've got one that's slowly bouncing up and down. And the other one's rock steady, which is strange. I goofed up the wiring just a little bit and have those muddled in there like that. After a redress of the wires, the amplifier performed quite well, but of course then I ran into another unobtainium problem. Well, looks like it was a showstopper. The head, she's a dead. I discovered after doing a little research that Perpetua and Ebner, though they did market some of their own cartridges, they never produced any of their own. Like most of the turntable manufacturers of the day, they relied on third parties to produce their cartridges. One manufacturer that did produce its own cartridges was Philips. These were a special salt crystal design, notorious for turning into a pile of goo after just a few years of exposure to air. Even new old stock went open for the first time. One would find this same pile of goo. Get on with it. Oh, sorry. My initial searches on Google were, to say the least, rather shocking. I did go back to my PhotoFax document and discovered that there's not just one, but three possible third-party cartridges available for my model of turntable. Now, whether or not I can find any of these, at least we know now it's not the end of my story, but at least the beginning of the end of my story. So, we're getting down to the near end of my amplifier. I had it all together, as we remember. And then I realized the head was dead, or I should say the cassette, the cartridge was dead. I did have a look at it and tried to take it apart, unfortunately. Talking to my little brother, who actually had this in his room for a while. He broke this many years ago, he said, and he knocked these two screws out and glued them in. That's probably why they fell out. So today's thing is to glue those back in to where they belong, which is a quite an easy process. I don't want to take this off yet because I haven't got my I haven't got my replacement cartridge. The other good thing about that particular PE is they never made their own cartridges. They did make their own needles, as you can see from the PE there. Put that that way. The PE emblem there. But they never make their own cartridges. Very few turns out very few record companies did. It was a third party system. So it's not unobtainium. I've ordered one up and it should be here any day now. Hopefully it fits. First, I gotta get those back in there and wait for them to dry. And once they're dry in there, I'm gonna take this off. But I'm not gonna take that off until. Yes! Get over there! There we go. And now let's just hurry up and wait. Riley, is this a box? What? Would you like a box? What? Do you want the box? Can you say box? Hello. Hello. Okay, go get the box. So, let's give this a quick open. Ah. Ah. Good guys, these guys. Voice of music. Though they really don't uh, specialize in my particular radio. Ooh, looking at a pretty girl too. Cool. And they've always given me stuff like this. Blah, 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 blah. Total money. Pop me your order, please contact cartridges, da da da. Pinout! Ah! 
They even give me a little pinout, plus, minus, left, right, three, four. Perfect. And they said, according to a protofact, this should be a good fit. The difference is just a needle. Good. Two needles. So, to the side. Let's have another box. Oh boy. Sexy. Won't for that crap. The other good thing is, ooh, coupons for hamburgers. Chicken choice. Sneaky cheese. Mozzarella sticks. Deep fried turkey. Oh, okay. Uh, Arby's. I wonder if I can catch those in. Man. Anyway, open her up. Have a look. Uh, they always package their stuff well. Ah, I've gotten a lot of the stuff from that. Uh, yeah, new, new old stock. Perfect. And that's going to be a easy find. So I went out and Google and uh, searched around. Came back with a couple eBay sellers. The first one was. $49.95. I found another one for $29.95. Came back the next day. The first one was $59.95. And the other one was $39.95. Did some more searching. And every time I went to a place, the price got more and more expensive. So it's usually, when you're searching for something like this, you see it, buy it right away at the price. Because they just bounce the price up as soon as anybody looks. I imagine if I go back this week and look again, the price for this is, will go down. I've seen that many times before with tubes. Uh, well, a couple times before with tubes. A famous thing in Mr. Carlson's lab where he said, here's my list of parts, and as soon as he puts the list of parts out, the prices all double everywhere. Especially for any vintage equipment. Anyway, this is where I get these guys. They had one price. They told what it is. I sent them an email. They told me it was the one I should use. Perfect. So. Going to attempt a cartridgectomy here. Cartridge and the new cartridge. Sure. Hopefully that works. So, managed to get it put back in there, and now I want to see if it's actually working. Tonight, a real quick first test is just to hook up the old oscope here and watch what comes out on the oscope. I'm not going to run it, you can just put it down like that and spin it a bit and you should get output on the scope. And I do! Yes! So it's actually working. Ugh, I can show you that. We'll go commando here for a minute. And I spin the magic dial. Look at that. And I get noise out of the cartridge. One volt of vision. I'm getting like one or two volts out of there. <laughs> Straightened out. I've got it hooked up to my speakers. I've got it set down there. Of course, the only problem is I don't have the right belt drives. The belt drives are too short. So, let's give it a crack here and see if it actually starts off this first time. And press down here to get those belt drives to work. Nee. 
do your worst. Very well. Turn that off. Put even more tape down there. Still no power. Darn it. Get any power anywhere. something. Always something. Ugh. Yo, there is power in there. Damn cap got me. <laughs> got that in video too. suddenly start running again. Yeah, there's my cap drainer. Learned my lesson. Power up again. Hey, how about that? 40 years and it starts to work again. And there was much rejoicing. Didn't sound too bad. Speeding okay. Tone controls. Perfect. No, nope. just got to put it back in the chassis and give it to my daughter on her birthday. <laughs> 